foolishness and the two world war were standing. Okay, thanks, Tim. Please join me in the Christian greeting. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also, also with you. Our Advent candle this morning will be lit by Ashley and Max. Last Sunday, we lit the candles of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. And we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peace. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting, like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land. We wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait for the day when we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. We will light, light this candle, candle this day. Enjoy. Today we remember the Spirit who brings joy into our lives. Please stand for the call of the chapel. When we found ourselves restored by God, we were like those who dream. God has filled our mouths with laughter. And has us with joy. Restore our fortunes, O oh God, of us all. Let those who are blessed now rejoice. Our hymn of praise this morning is Joy to the World.
join me in the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. We thank you, O God, for all those in Scripture who have pointed to Christ, for your prophets Elijah and Isaiah, for other prophets and for John. We thank you, too, for those in our lives who have pointed us to Christ, pastors and teachers, strangers and friends. Give us eyes to see him today among those who are oppressed, imprisoned, brokenhearted, or beaten down, as we give our testimony to how Christ releases and sets free, how he turns ashes into garlands, how he repairs and builds up what we ruined. We, too, will point others to Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Old habits and new wrongs wear ruts through our lives and relationships. But God is able to restore us, like water cursing through a desert. The waters of baptism flow through us, reminding us that we belong to God and are raised to new life. Let us confess our sins by praying the prayer of confession together. Merciful God, you love justice. Why then do we persist in wrongdoing and every form of evil? You have given us the gift of your spirit. Why then do we quench the spirit among us? You have given us the words of the prophets and the word himself. Why then do we despise and ignore what we have heard from you? You have sent the light into the world. Why then have we loved darkness rather than light? Forgive us, restore us, till and tend us as your garden until righteousness and praise spring up. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Let us conclude our prayer of confession together. Forgive my rejection of your will and my contempt for your promise. Heal my divided spirit and reveal your way in my Lord once again. Let the sinfulness no longer define me. Yoke me to the way of my Lord. Amen. In Jesus Christ, the Lord has done great things for us. Even if we have gone out in tears, God brings us home shouting for joy. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We are forgiven.
Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people of the Lord and has been blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord, for my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of great righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns himself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes season, seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Our second reading this morning is from also the Old Testament, Psalm 126. We'll be reading responsibly. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths are filled with laughter, our tongues of songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and will be filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like strings in the hand. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who sow with weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves to the This ends our scripture reading. Our gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, and then we'll skip to 19 through 28. If you would like to follow along, it's printed on your scripture sheet. Let us hear the word of the Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testifying concerning the light, so that through him, all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now, this was John's testimony when the Je Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. The people asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had sent him questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, he replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Most of us have been asked at one time or another, where were you born? Probably we have also been asked where we were raised or how we grew up. It's a safe bet, however, that not many of us have ever been asked why we were born or why we were still alive. That line of questioning may be the kind of thing armchair philosophers muse about, but it is seldom the topic of water cooler conversation, party talk, or family dinner discussion. The question that revolves around the place or the circumstances of our birth may be interesting. How we grew up may be intriguing to family members or others who are close to us. But beyond their informational or even entertainment value, the answers to those questions are not nearly as important as the answer as to why we were born or even why we are still alive. The answers concerning the place or even the circumstances of our birth 
do not have the power to provide direction or meaning to our lives in the way that the way of our birth and our life does. So, why were we born? Why the creator of the entire cosmos set fit to include each of us in the total picture of this vast universe? If our birth was simply an accident, then God does not have the power that we ascribe to a divine intelligence. If, on the other hand, each of us has a purpose, it behooves us to discover what that purpose is. We are told that God loves us. We also say that we are created in the image and likeness of God. It is then not a far jump to say that we were born to learn and to teach and to practice love. In other words, we were born to learn and to teach about God, as well as to live his way. But how aware are we of this reality? And how willing are we to say yes to this awesome assignment? In fact, it is the most important assignment we will ever receive. And our yes to the assignment is the important yes we will ever utter. The assignment is not the assignment from a boss or a teacher. It is not an assignment given to us by a president, a king, or a governor. It is an assignment given by the God of our life. Consider John the Baptist and what we hear him say of himself in the gospel today. He was a man who knew his assignment and who had said yes. He realized his purpose. He knew who he was and why he was here as surely as he knew who he was not. We hear him admit to himself, his questioners, that he is not the Messiah, despite the fact that we all at times give the impression that we think we are messiahs of sorts. The role does not fit us well, because that is not what we have been born to be. Then we hear John announce who he is, and it shows that he realizes the purpose of his life. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, John says. Perhaps we might respond that we are not John the Baptist. Well, that may be true, but it is just as true that our assignment and purpose of our lives are similar to his. We are all called to be voices crying out in the wilderness of our own time. We are all called to make straight the way of the Lord. The people with whom we rub elbows are not going to meet John the Baptist. They are meeting you and me. That gives each of us the power that John had as he preached at the Jordan River. That's right, a power. The power of God within us. The refusal to use it as God wants us to is an insult to the Creator. We're not bad people. We do not have bad intentions. And certainly we do not wish to insult God. So why then do we not use this power? Why do we overlook the assignment that has been given to each of us? One answer may lie in the way we have come to think of the division in Christianity into those we call lay people and those we call clergy. In the minds of many, clergy are seen as God's people. They are assigned by the community to be the people who do the praying for those thought by some to be less capable or even less worthy of doing so. More often than not, if there is a clergy person in the room and a prayer is called for, it is the cleric who is called upon, as if lay people will not be heard by God as well. But when it comes to having a pipeline to God, none of us have an advantage. It is given to all of us, regardless.
regardless of our stations in life, to make straight the way of the Lord. So the question is, how do we make the way straight? We can begin only by accepting the message of John the Baptist in our own lives. We come the voices in the wilderness only when we can show the way. People whose lives we touch need to see that faith not only matters to us, but that it can, when lived honestly, give meaning, purpose, and fulfillment to life. It's true that we do this in a wilderness. Ours is a, ours is a world of as many gods as those found in ancient Greece or Rome. Of course, we do not call them gods, but our idols are many. A consumer society in which bigger is better, more is sought after, power is envied, and celebrity is worshipped is a barren wilderness when it comes to focusing our life on God. The problem is excavated by the fact that you and I cannot realistically withdraw from this society, and we have at some level bought into its values. So we are not only called to make way the street of the Lord, we are called to do so in a world that is as surely a wilderness as was the dis district of the Jordan River. At least we see the world only in negative terms, however. We should remember that while the world has a wilderness dimension, it is also populated by people who want God in the center of their lives, even those who do not realize what it is they seek for, as someone who put it, wired for God. <coughs> there is a spiritual thirst that is evident, a thirst that crosses generations and subcultures. It is for us to offer news of Christ, the water of life, to those who thirst in a wilderness world. Anyone who has been married knows that the yes or the I do uttered in a wedding ceremony is not enough to sustain a marriage. It is a yes that must be repeated each day. Saying yes to our assignment to make straight the way of the Lord can be no less. It is yes that must be repeated over and over. It is a yes that must be lived as surely as it is preached. Not all preachers are found in pulpits. Not all Christians are accomplished speakers. But we can be models of faith, models to whom people can look and say, I want to be like that. In other words, those who would make the Lord's way straight need to be advertisements for the Lord. This is not only the assignment we have been, been given, it is the power with which we have been invested. So there are yet a couple of final questions. Why would someone who watches us in an office, a shop, or even a church want to believe what we say we believe? Why would someone who hears us at a party, at a dinner, a parent-teacher's meeting, wherever else people express their views, want to follow us on the road to the Lord. These are questions that we should not ignore. It is for us to make the Lord attractive to those who hear us, those who watch us, and those who are influenced by our lives. It is for us to understand and accept that we are called to be the voices in the wilderness, and to lead lives that model faith as John did. It is for us to make straight the way of the Lord. The time we have been given to do that is now. This is the ultimate way of our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our hymn of response, O Thou Joyful, O Thou Wonderful, let us stand and lift up our voices.
confirm what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed together, which is found in your book. <coughs> Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, who restores, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. So often you have filled us with laughter, even turning tears of sadness into shouts of joy. You send prophets who point the way to justice and show the way to you. We pray for those who are sick, particularly Dale and Louise, Mary, Tammy, Cindy, Nora, Lou, Jan, Margaret, Chris, Zoe, Bobby, Garrett, Kelly, Sharon, Alan, Mark John, related to the Greens, Gail's friend, Holly, Phil Reed, his daughter, Paula, Becky, Tim and Lou's daughter, Michelle, and son, Michael, as well as Lou's friends, Anita and Debbie, and Lou's cousin, Eric, Peggy, Becky's son-in-law, mother, Dolly, and a friend, Chris, who is seriously burned. Ryan's grandmother and Aunt Diane, Claire's husband, Carl, Gail and Bill, Jack and Jill, Bruce, Doogie's friend, David, Leila's friends, Mrs. Campbell, Keith, and her sister, Elizabeth. We thank you for sending good news to us and repairing so much that we have devastated. In this season of light, we lift up in prayer so many who wait in darkness, people oppressed by poverty and discrimination, by political upheaval or dangerous rules, people imprisoned long, wrongly, and also those imprisoned justly. Right what is wrong among us, and in us, and restore us to you, to others, to ourselves. Make the heartbroken whole again. Comfort those who mourn repair our ruined cities, and all the jostling and jingling of these days, do not let us lose sight of you or those whom you especially came to serve, people who are in need of healing, people who are overlooked or underserved, the ones who are lost, the ones who are made to feel little and least. Light the world, live among us always, full of grace and truth. Let us pray the prayer the Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. rejoice in the needs of others intended.
of dedication found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Gracious God, teach us to give thanks in all circumstances. You are always with us. Thank you for the privilege of sharing what we have with others, of giving ourselves away in love, and of receiving the gifts that are shared with us. With our whole being, spirit, and soul, and body, we rejoice in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ascending hymn is How Great Our Joy. charge to you this morning is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, witness to the light of Christ so that all might believe through him. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat>